Hello, everyone. Julie Sachuk here, Building Without Barriers. We are live in the bathroom today. This is my traveling YouTube studio. I don't know, it's kind of exciting to be out of the house. Um, again, Julie Sachuk, I am your host for Building Without Barriers today, live in the bathroom. And where am I? I am at Pick a Posey, my fashion sponsor. Um, wearing this beautiful blue and white, I don't know, they look like sunflowers. And uh, I want to thank Jennifer for letting me be here in her bathroom. And I decided that today um, we needed to just have a one on one talking about toilets. Um, it really is the most uh, significant and important feature in a bathroom. And I could have done this in my own bathroom at home and talked to you about it from a residential perspective, but I thought it was maybe um, a little bit more relevant to everybody if we looked at a commercial washroom setup, specifically looking at the toilet. So today we're talking about toilets. A um, couple of fun announcements for me to share with you is I'm gonna be working with Dyson Canada. They um, reached out to me after a conference last week and are interested in uh, having me do some education with their staff at, D at Dyson Canada and looking at one of their new models of um, hand dryers. So I'm really, really excited about that. And I also heard from the Minister of Seniors and Accessibility to um, work on a round table with them. So lots of fun, exciting things happening with me. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. So you know, I'm kind of a little bit nervous about today because I don't have a guest, but I did that for a reason because I just want to talk about my experiences with toilets and share some of my stories and give you some of the sort of the nitty gritty details that you may not have thought about when it comes to designing a space with a, an accessible toilet. And really um, what, what spurred me to do this was watching Crip Camp um, on Netflix and when Judy Human talks about after the ADA has been implemented and she's being interviewed by a journalist and the journalist is saying to her, you know, Judy, are you still angry? And it, it just made me think about me and how often people interpret um, feedback about accessibility as, as anger. And, uh, and Judy's response was, well, really, like, how long do we have to be thankful for an accessible bathroom? Like, how, how many times do I have to say, oh, thank you for having an accessible bathroom? So that made me realize, you know, that's totally right. Why do we have to, why is it a surprise? It should just be the way it is. So when you have a bathroom in your facility, let's make it an accessible bathroom. And it's just the way that it is. It's just the way it should be. Um, I'm gonna be referring to building better bathrooms today. Oops, I've got it here with me. Um, all of the numbers and the details that you need are here. So I'll probably flip that open um, a couple of times. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna get this banner out of the way so that you can see full screen. Um, do me a favor and tell me that I'm not here by myself. Um, drop your name in the comments or tell me where you are. Um, if you are hanging out in a bathroom too to compare, that would be so much fun. So tell me you're here, tell me you're watching, tell me you're listening. Um, if you're watching after the fact on my YouTube channel, thank you for coming to toilet training today. Yeah, I wanted to call it toilet training, but my daughter was like, mm, mom, I don't really think you can do that. So we're just gonna say talking toilets. So if you're here, Tell me I'm not alone in the bathroom talking to myself, please. So looking at the toilet, this is like a standard commercial toilet. Um, it is floor mounted as opposed to wall mounted, right? The tank is not just attached to the wall. And the height of the toilet, this is like a medium tall toilet, I would say. So if I do this, you can see a little bit better the height of the toilet. Sylvan, thank you. Not alone from Halifax, awesome. Halifax in the house. Um, and the shape of the toilet here, this is not a round bowl. This is what we would call an oval or an oblong um, toilet bowl, 
which gives greater length, which for somebody like me is particularly helpful. And I'm gonna get into the details as to why that is. So the other feature that is the most obvious is the U-shaped toilet seat. So it has that front opening. Now, prior to me needing an accessible toilet, um, Heather is here. Hello, Heather Ferguson, awesome. Um, prior to me needing an accessible toilet, I kind of thought that like front open toilet setup was like a man thing, you know what I mean? Um, but now I know differently that it's an accessibility feature because it allows more space for somebody who needs to get their hand between their legs. And yes, everybody does it, but when you can't stand up to do it, it's challenging. So it just gives you more space. Looking at the toilet tank, um, that gives me something to lean against, right? I don't have core strength. That's why I have um, a back rest on my wheelchair so that I have something to lean against. Um, because basically my core strength ends right about here at about my bra line. So I need something to lean against while I am seated on the toilet. <laughs> Jennifer's learning so much about her own bathroom. Right on. The other thing that you can do in uh, to, to create something to lean against is having that seat lid, right? And I know in... Um, some facilities, it means that it's an extra piece to possibly break or need to be cleaned, but it, provi it provides protection between plumbing and a person's spine. So my spine, I have like no, um, no fat tissue, no muscle tissue. It's basically just skin and bone. So if I'm leaning against bare plumbing, like in an industrial style toilet, then I'm really grinding my spine against that and I can bruise my spine or you know, damage, cause a skin issue. So having something to lean against is really, really important. So if you don't have a toilet tank, please install a seat lid, a toilet seat lid so that there's something there to lean against. Those little tiny backrests that you've seen that attach to the plumbing behind the toilet, they're not awesome. Um, they're not very big, they're not at all flexible, and they don't, um, they don't provide uh, any sort of concaveness to support the curve of the spine, which the toilet seat lid actually does. And that's what I have on my toilet at home. So um, one thing that could be improved about this setup is the toilet seat, sorry, the toilet tank is not actually attached to the tank itself, the toilet tank lid. So it, it can shift. And when I sit and lean, it actually does shift a little bit. So there, there are designs where that um, tank lid is actually screwed down and attached to the, um, the tank itself, so it can't shift. Um, I suppose if you shifted enough, um, you could actually like knock it onto the floor. Um, I know that it means that you can't get the lid off easily, but it's, you know, it's a decision that needs to be made. It's a safety thing. Katie is watching. Awesome. She's doing a bathroom consulting assessment later today. Well, isn't this good timing? Thanks, Katie, for being here. Wonderful. Um, the height of the toilet. Now, when we're looking at things from a building code perspective. Um, the Ontario Building Code has a range, um, suggests a range of between 430 centimeters and I think it's 480 centimeters. Um, I don't know why there is such a range because 430 centimeters is not at all accessible. Um, I'm gonna just share my screen here for a minute um, because I wanna show you a video and hopefully this works. This is me transferring from a really, really low toilet. Um, I'm hoping you're seeing what I am seeing. And the reason why I wanna show you this is because <laughs> I want you to see the serious amount of effort that it takes me to get off of that really low toilet. That video um, is on my YouTube channel. 
it's been watched over 42,000 times. Um, so lots of people wanting to see what uh, toilet transfer looks like. Thank you, Lara. My sister is here watching. That, that YouTube video is among a bunch of videos that I have posted on my YouTube channel that are all available for you to learn more about accessibility. And obviously I talk a lot about bathrooms, um, but it's a great resource and it's all there free and available for you to watch anytime. So back to this toilet here. Another thing that I um, would suggest when you are creating an accessible commercial space is to have that taller toilet. So it really makes a difference for me getting off um, my wheelchair and onto the toilet. The less height difference, the easier it is. Um, the other feature that we need to mention, of course, is the flusher. The flusher should be on the transfer side of the toilet. So when we're looking at the setup here, we see the wall side of the toilet and then we see the transfer side of the toilet. And people do their toilet transfer all number of ways, right? So if you, um, I have a lot of what they call dump in my chair. <laughs> I know. And what it means is my butt, whoops, this way, my butt is really like angled down this way. So I have, um, I have a, about four inches between the height of my seat and the top of my wheel. So it means I have to overcome that to get onto a different surface. So the way I do that is I bring my butt up to the front corner of the seat and then I get onto the toilet. So I do that on an angle, but there's lots of people that will back up beside the toilet. And this is why this is called the transfer space here, because they'll actually lean over their chair and lift themselves onto the toilet this way. So that's why that's called the transfer side of the toilet. And you'll see on the transfer side of the toilet, we have this amazing fold down grab bar. And it's really easy to operate. Um, it doesn't lock into place, so you don't have to lift it up to bring it down. It just swings down. It stays in place right there, and then it, you can just lift it out of the way. And I'm going to show you how I actually use that. And then on the wall side of the toilet, we have an L-shaped grab bar with the toilet paper located below the grab bar so that it's not in the way um, using the, the horizontal bar as leverage. Um, the rear grab bar is about, I don't know, it looks like it's about eight, eight centimeters, um, off the surface of the toilet tank, which gives you enough, um, space for your knuckles to fit in that. Um, I have had to use that grab bar as a transfer bar in some situations, like when I've pulled grab bars off the wall in a couple of different locations, um, they weren't attached properly on this wall. So... I had to spin myself around and figure out how to maneuver to get myself um, back into my wheelchair. Those were challenging times. So I'm gonna, the sound might change a little bit because I'm gonna show you how I transfer onto the toilet um, and I'm gonna have to take my headphones out. So hopefully that is working okay. I know there's a fan in here and it might just um, change the volume a bit. Let's try and do this so that it's not just my back. So like I said, I come up on an angle. I usually scratch the front of the toilet seat. So sorry to everybody whose toilet I have scratched over the past five and a half years. So I bring my butt up and then I slide down onto the toilet. So you can see that the greater that distance is between my seat and the toilet itself, the um, the harder I'm going to land when I get onto the toilet. And if you're not gentle about it, that's what, exactly what happens. So now I just take off one break. Because if I were to take off two breaks, then there's the opportunity for my chair to just like roll away wherever. Now I'm wearing a dress today, which is lovely. Um, but what I wanted to show you is how I use this both bars, right? So I need to pee, so I need to pull down my pants, say, right? And I will shift 
I'll use this horizontal bar to pull my pants down here, and then I lean this way to pull my pants down here. If there's not a drop down bar, what I'll do is I will park my wheelchair right beside me and I'll use it to lean against, but it's a mobility device, it moves, right? So um, it's not the safest way to, to do that. Um, so this is, it's just, it's, a, it's an energy saver, it's a safety device, um, and it's really easy uh, to install, you just have to make sure that you're installing it to the stud and to the backing that you have provided behind the toilet um, and all of the drywall. That's the word I was looking for. So back into my chair. And probably you're most familiar with this grab bar being on an angle. You've probably seen it everywhere um, in all sorts of oldish buildings. That is no longer the code for uh, a wall, a grab bar on the wall beside the toilet. It's not particularly helpful to a large number of people. And so the anthropometrics have shown that a horizontal bar with a vertical component provides more assistance to more people um, than the, the horizontal or the, the diagonal bar. And um, I just demonstrate that just by the fact that this is what I need to do. You can see I need leverage to lift myself up. And in order to do that, I have to have this on a, my hand on a horizontal surface. Putting it on an angle doesn't allow me to get the muscle strength that I need to do that lift. Um, it, my hand will slide down. Often the diagonal portion of the bar starts up really high, so it puts my shoulder in a compromising, like not safe position, right? Physically, um, can cause damage to uh, muscle joint and all of that. I'll talk about the emergency call system in a minute. I'm gonna get back into my chair to make sure my foot's in the right spot. Oops, lost a shoe. So you can see that that, that lift, because of the, the um, taller toilet as compared to the video, um, was a lot easier. I'm a little stronger than I was back then too, but anyways. So that's grab bars. So let's talk about the emergency call system for a minute. Put my glasses back on so I can see you guys. So the emergency call system is set up, obviously, for somebody to, you know, push the button when they need help. This emergency call system is located a little bit too high. So when you think about it, if you're falling um, off the toilet, you don't have the split second reaction to go, crap, I'm falling. Um, I'm going to push the emergency call button on my way down, right? So ideally, you want to be able to reach that emergency call button while you are at the floor. So technically, that means if you're lying on the floor, you should be able to reach that emergency call button. It should be placed in a way that um, you would be able to do that. This is too high. So the better spot is right there. Okay, so it's about 430 centimeters off the floor. Um, what, what, what we often see is also obstructions, like um, those giant toilet roll holders that you see in industrial um, spaces. So having the, um, when the emergency call button is, you know, on the, on the top side of that toilet roll, it's also in a useless place. Um, Lara is asking, is it helpful for ones that have a string attached to activate the alarms? It depends on the type of alarm. That actually you have to physically push it in, so a string is not going to help in that situation. Some of the older style are little slide buttons, kind of like light switches, um, but the the string is also not a safety, um, like not a proper safety thing. It's kind of like you know a choking hazard, or you, you wouldn't do strings um, on your blinds, that kind of thing. So the string is not the way to do it anymore. It's about placement and and having it. Um, in the appropriate place. 
So this emergency call button is wired so that the light will activate. If I show you up, you can see that the light will activate. It's very, very loud. And it also has the same light on the outside of the door. So you will, um, you know, it'll be seen that somebody is requiring assistance. Then the shop owner has a key to unlock the door and um, we'll be able to come in and provide assistance for the person that needs it. And then it's a simple reset. You just have to pull that button out, um, which makes it really easy. There's no complicated system. Um, there are lots of systems that are a little bit more complex. They, you know, will send a message to the, um, the help desk or, you know, depending on what kind of building you're in. So yeah, I think we've talked about everything that really matters with the toilet. What am I missing? What questions do you have out there, ladies and gentlemen? Please let me know. Um, what else can I be telling you about while we're here? Having a look in building better bathrooms. Um, we've got all of these details located um, with lots of drawings and here's lots of stories about toilets. Come on in. Hi. Hello. Are you going to take a picture? I am. Thank you. So we've got lots of information about toilet selection and the drawings, right? So this is what we consider to be the ultimate toilet setup um, with everything where it needs to be. Oh, I forgot to check, talk about garbage, right? So Jennifer's got a nice little garbage can um, that is out of the way in terms of transfer space um, in a more um, highly used washroom setup. You would probably have a sanitary disposal on the wall sort of below and back towards the, um, the back end of the toilet, but not on the rear wall. Anything that's on the rear wall means you have to like really turn to reach it. And for somebody who doesn't have balance or strength, those kinds of um, maneuverings are more difficult. Um, Heather, have, uh, you have a question. I have a question. Okay. Um, mine is about access to the bathroom. Yes. Because I know there's lots of accessible bathrooms, but then how do you get to it? Right. So how do you get to an accessible bathroom in terms of like the door, the space to it? What, what you... It's more like what does stores have to make sure it's clear before uh, you get to it? Right. Yeah. So having um, a width access aisle of about three feet minimum mm -hmm. and a door width the same 36 inches minimum. And that means like not having racks or you know, bins of goods for sale or, you know, whatever might be in the way, right? Like you're moving things around and then you forget that you've left a box in the aisle. So all of those kinds of things, it's, um, it, it would be a good exercise to get into a routine of like traveling the paths in your store on a regular basis, like every day before you open or something like that, just to make sure that um, things are out of the way so that somebody can get to the bathroom. Because yeah. I know I'm guilty of that, even though I think very regularly about making my store accessible. Oh, yeah. I have bags and things on the floor all the time. Well, I mean, Jennifer has sent me messages and saying things like, so I'm moving things around. How far away should this be from this? And I really appreciate that because it means that you're thinking about it and it helps everybody. So thanks. Um, Heather is saying, I've been getting resistance to put in higher toilets as there are problems with low flush options. Hmm. So are we talking about like, um, like one, uh, different amounts of water flushing? See, I, I don't know the back end plumbing parts of it. Um, but I do know that tall toilets help a lot of people. And it's not just somebody like me who's using a mobility device. Think about when you've been at the gym and you've done like a hundred million squats. And then either later that day, or the next day you go to sit down on the toilet and your legs are like, oh, that really hurts, right? And wouldn't it be great to have a grab bar that you could hold on to and a taller toilet so it wasn't quite so much effort to get back into standing? As we age, our bodies don't work the way they have in the past. So the more support you can provide people as they age by having a tall toilet, 
will make a difference. So Heather's saying the water doesn't come up high enough. Um, oh, so it becomes like an energy water efficiency kind of issue. I understand. But tall toilets don't necessarily need to have higher water levels. Um, I don't know how much detail you want me to get into, but higher water levels actually come into play when somebody can't stand. Um, I have dipped my hand in toilet water. I don't think I need to say more than that, but um, if you think it through, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, it's not a pleasant thing to feel your, the back of your hand dip into the cold water of the toilet. Yeah, it's gross. Um, I know there are a lot, of, a lot of challenges, but really it's about starting the discussion. So pose the question, you know, to the, the client that you're working with, whether it's a private home or whether it is a commercial setting, um, how, how do you wanna set up your space? Do you want your space to work the best for everybody? Do you want your space to work for you for as long as possible? Um, my parents, for example, they just renovated their bathroom, their last bathroom renovation, unless they decide to do the basement. Um, but the discussions were about how do we create longevity in this setup so that it is going to work for them for as long as they are living in that home. And you know, there's a bit of back and forth and a bit of pushback in terms of, well, I don't want my bathroom to look accessible. But keep in mind, this is a commercial space. Um, it is completely 100% functional. We could make it beautiful by just adding some color to the walls or changing the color of the grab bars that are installed. So that um, accessible equals institutional doesn't have to be the case. And if you um, have hung out with me in my own bathroom at all, you will know that my bathroom is beautiful and also accessible. So I'm gonna wrap it up. I actually did talk about toilets for half an hour. So thank you everyone for being with me here today. Please go to my YouTube channel, watch the videos that are there, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be great. And give me some feedback. What do you want to know more about in terms of accessibility? I am, I am here to help you and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Please get in touch at juliesawchuk.ca. And if you're looking for your own copy of Building Better Bathrooms, you can go to my website or you can go to buildingbetterbathrooms.ca. I keep holding this up upside down. So um, grab your copy, Canadian printed in Blythe, just down the street, and I'll even sign it for you. Have a great Friday, everyone. If, you're, uh, if it's Friday where you're at right now, if you're listening later on, thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again on a Friday live building without barriers. Take care, everybody. Bye.